When it comes to closet organization, there are so many tips and tricks out there. It's kind of confusing, kind of overwhelming. And that's why I want to simplify everything and share the only five rules you really need in order to organize your closet forever and ever. These are the only five rules that I personally use to keep my closet looking like this 95% of the time, because yes, if you do it right, your closet is always going to look organized, almost always. <laughs> so I'm very excited to share these tips with you today. And I also want to mentioned that it doesn't matter what kind of wardrobe you have, if you have a small wardrobe, a big wardrobe, a walk-in closet, or even if you move places and your wardrobe changes, it doesn't really matter. You can have these five rules and take them with you and apply them and use them forever. Now, the first rule of closet organization is to always, always keep it current. And that means that everything that you have out in your wardrobe serves you. So it fits your body, it fits your lifestyle and also the season that you're in. Anything that it's not appropriate shouldn't really be hanging on your hangers or be in your drawers. It should be somewhere else in a storage, maybe in an empty suitcase or under bed storage or just in another drawer in another house, but just not in your wardrobe. But let's break it down even more so you know exactly which pieces shouldn't be in your wardrobe. <laughs> so the first category is items that are either too big or too small for your body. So everything that doesn't fit you pretty much. And like I said, you don't have to declutter this, but again, Again, you don't want to keep them in your wardrobe. They're going to make dressing so much harder. You're going to feel miserable. It's just going to be a reminder that your body is different and we don't want that. Then the second thing we should put in storage are things that are out of season. When I was younger, I had only one wardrobe. So I had my winter thick winter jumpers in the summer and I had my summer dresses in the winter, even though I never ever wore those. So that's just a waste of space. Now, of course, it's going to be very personal how many stuff you put in storage. So don't worry about the particular number. Just if the item, you know, 100%, you're not going to wear it because it's not season appropriate, you should put it away. And then we also have to talk about items that you never ever wore them. Maybe they still have the tags on, which is the worst. <laughs> so if you have any items like this, in my opinion, the best thing you can do is to simply declutter them. But if you still want to commit to them, then also just take the tag off and try wearing them. And then if it doesn't work out, you can also declutter them later. And then we also have to talk about uncomfortable items because those also shouldn't be in our wardrobe because we're not gonna really wear them and enjoy them. Maybe the material, it's not, it's scratchy, we don't enjoy it, maybe we have to constantly readjust the piece. In my suggestion, in my opinion, I would declutter those as well. And then we also have those damaged items, stained items that are kind of past their prime, but we're still holding on to. And if you have any pieces like that, I would do two things. One is if you like the item and it's fixable, fix it, try to clean it, give it to a tailor if it needs to be tailored, or if that doesn't work, you can just simply declutter it because sometimes even if we love something, but it's just in a really, really bad shape, we should let it go. <laughs> and then the last thing I want to mention is special occasion items. You just don't want to have those items that you can only wear for special occasion next to your main wardrobe because again it's going to waste a lot of space it's going to make dressing more confusing so you just want to find a little corner somewhere in your house and then kind of make it a little bit pretty and this is your special occasion pieces maybe special occasion section in your wardrobe if you have enough space and you can include everything from shoes maybe handbags maybe accessories maybe you have some jewelry or like i said clothing items as well so once you do this, your closet is going to be much more spacious and you're going to have so much room to play with it. But if it happens that you have too much room and you have really empty spaces in your wardrobe, we don't want to leave them empty because that can lead to unnecessary shopping in the future. So what you want to do is treat your closet as a boutique. So you want to space things out. Even if I would declutter this wardrobe and <laughs> took some things out as well, again, I would space it more and more and more. You can really play with this also with your drawers. Again, the same thing. If you take things out, you can fold them in a little bit of different way. So everything is spaced out. Then rule number two is to make sure you can see absolutely everything that you have in your wardrobe. Every single piece that you have, you should clearly see it when you open your wardrobe or your drawer. And this is something when I did a survey and I asked some women what their pain points are with their wardrobe and organization, they said, I cannot see everything. And then I'm buying duplicates, getting dressed in the morning. It's hard. And that's why it's really important that you readjust and reorganize your closet in a way where everything is visible. So I have a few tips on how you can do that. 
The first tip is when it comes to your drawers, <laughs> if you're folding horizontally like this, you should start folding vertically. So when you open the drawer, you can absolutely see all of your jeans or your pants or your jumpers, sweaters, it doesn't really matter. They should be really visible when you open the drawer. Then the second thing you can do is to put as much stuff as you can on hangers. This is my favorite tip. And I know not all people love that, but if you look at my wardrobe, it's so easy to see everything. I can see, oh, this is a cami, this is a t-shirt, this is an off-shoulder design. I see it right away, but I just wanna emphasize that really, really heavy knits or dresses, you don't wanna put on hangers because they can stretch out. So in those situations, it's better to fold them. Or what I started doing just not long time ago, <laughs> this is my long cardigan. If I leave it like this, it can stretch out. So I just take the bottom and I kind of do it like this so it, it won't stretch out. So you can also play with this kind of, you know, trick <laughs> or you can just put them on the shelf. You can see this is an extra shelf that I have and in the winter I put it like this so I can put all of my heavy knits underneath because I don't wanna hang them. And then tip number three is when it comes to our shelves. Now, shelves are also very useful, but a lot of the time the wardrobes, they're 60 centimeter deep, which means that you can have two rows, one in the front and one in the back. And if you have a lot of shelves and things at the back, that's gonna be really, really hard to get dressed and to see what you have. So what you can do, this is the best that I, have to show you <laughs> but you can have some kind of boxes and then you can put these boxes like this and you put things vertically so you kind of create a diy drawer and then you can just take the box out and you can see everything and then you can slide it back in and of course <laughs> you would need a deeper box so it reaches the end and also <laughs> to make sure you know what's in there you can put a label on it or you can even find clear baskets so you have a clear idea right away once you see it. Then rule number three, it's all about making sure everything is super, super easy to organize. Very often when we're reorganizing our closets, we are focused on how it should look, the end result. But then we forget how hard it's gonna be to maintain that, how hard it's gonna be to put every single piece in that storage solution that we just came up with. And that's why we wanna simplify that. So what I created for myself is a 15 second rule. That means that if it takes me longer than 50 seconds to put the item back into my wardrobe, I should find another way of sewing it or another way of folding it or anything like that. I will explain, but let me just show you how this would work and how I timed it. <laughs> so I timed myself with a lot of my items. I timed my sister with a lot of her items. And we kind of realized that when you have things that take 15 seconds or less, you won't postpone putting these items back into your wardrobe. It's important, once you have it in your arms, how long does it take for you to put it back into your wardrobe? So you do it like this, you put the timer, and then you do the whole system. You see, this is so easy. <laughs> and I just open the drawer and I put it back. And it's so simple. Or another example, I know you're so curious, <laughs> but my belts, I just always do it like this. Boom, and they are going in the back or with my tops. So I have it in my arms, I press the timer and then I put it on my hanger and I put it back, easy. <laughs> So of course we can have those special pieces that are maybe they have a really different material and they need special folding or special kind of hanging. <laughs> but that should be maybe 10, maybe max 20% of your wardrobe. Uh, because if you have a method that takes you a really long time for each piece to fold, to put back, it's gonna be a disaster <laughs> to keeping your closet organized. That's why, remember when I said this is my closet 95% of the time? That's why, because I have no reason to procrastinate because it takes me a second to put things back. So this is how my wardrobe works in a nutshell, but now I wanna give you some general tips on how you can assess what kind of method of storing is good for you. So the first thing that I wanna mention is hangers are everything. <laughs> like I said, you're gonna see everything, plus it's gonna make putting things back on your hangers much, much easier than to fold everything, especially remember when I was younger <laughs> and I had those special little tops with little frills and weird materials, and then I would have to fold them and they just wouldn't stay in that place. They would kind of 
<laughs> but then of course we also have some things like jeans and skirts and shorts which are not necessary to hang and I actually find it it takes me longer if I would put my jeans on hangers than it does if I just fold them and put them in the drawers. Also, when it comes to folding, I want to mention that not all folding is created equal. <laughs> Some methods are going to be much more peculiar and they're going to take longer than other methods. So if you have a really, really time consuming method of folding, maybe you can find an alternative online. There are so many different methods you can look. I started with the Conmary method <laughs> of folding, but of course I simplified it like you see with my jeans. I just like la, da, 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 da. I don't really put it on the bed and straighten it and put it in half and straighten it which I think is something that she does if I remember correctly so of course it's all personal if you really love folding and this is your you time <laughs> of course you can spend more time doing that but I personally don't and I think most people we don't like to spend too much time organizing that's why I'm giving you the suggestions then the last thing when it comes to folding is that I remember when I just had my shelves in my younger years I had a lot of problem with keeping everything the same width. <laughs> so an easy thing of how you can do that is maybe you have a book of a width that you like. So every time you're folding, you put the book on your bed and you just make all of your folds <laughs> in that space. So you keep everything in the same width. And then the last thing that is really important when it comes to keeping our closet organized is having a space in your closet or maybe somewhere in your bedroom or next to your wardrobe where you can put your already worn items. So this is what I call dirty, not dirty items. <laughs> I personally have things in my first drawer right here. This one right now is empty, but I'm gonna show you. But this is something where I put my already worn sports stuff. After I do my Pilates, I just put them in here and I have them for two, three days and then I put them in the wash. And then I also have another basket for my loungewear stuff. <laughs> I wear these things a lot of the times before I wash them and that's why I have these boxes so I don't put my dirty items back with my clean items. But when it comes to my wardrobe, I actually don't have any boxes for that because I personally just put things back. If I wear this jumper, I'm just gonna put it back and wear it a couple of times and then I'm gonna know when I need to wash it. I personally am not a fan of wearing something once and washing it. It just makes <laughs> clothes, they're gonna damage so much more quicker and it's not really necessary. Of course, it all depends what you're doing throughout the day and if you're sweating a lot or if it gets stained, of course you need to wash it. So you can have some kind of boxes for that. Maybe you can have some over the door hangers and you can put things on there. You want to decide for yourself what you want to do or like I said, you can just put things back if they are not super, super dirty. And then another important thing to mention is that you want to put your most used item in your most easy to reach spaces. You want to put the items that you wear less frequently on the top or at the bottom and things that you wear most frequently somewhere in your eyeline, somewhere that it's easy to reach which is again gonna make organizing much much easier and as always I know I keep asking you that I hope you don't mind it but if you're finding this video helpful and useful give it a thumbs up and also if you've come so far give me an emoji of a sock in the comments down below that's so fun for me the last time we did that I had so much fun because I never know when I give so much information if people stick around or they're kind of like oh I'm out <laughs> So thank you very much for all of your comments and likes and now let's continue. <laughs> now let's go to rule number four which is all about sectioning your wardrobe. So that means that we're storing similar items together. In the past I remember when I had my wardrobe I didn't really think about that. I had some maybe some skirts on my hangers, some jumpers in my drawer. <laughs> Everything was kind of mixed and matched where I had things and was very confusing and I didn't have clarity. So the reason we're doing this is because this is gonna really help you get dressed in the morning and it's also gonna help you when you're shopping because you're exactly gonna know how many things you have in a specific category. What you can section first is with the hanger areas, you can put all of your tops, all of your dresses, and also all of your kind of blazers, cardigans, and indoor jackets. But if you have a bigger wardrobe, maybe a walk-in closet, then you can section it even further. Then maybe you can have something like dresses in one section, maybe short sleeves and long sleeves and camis in one section, and then maybe all of your jackets and cardigans and blazers in the third section. I wouldn't take this too far and 
have something like camis in one section and then button ups in one section and then t-shirts in one section because it's gonna get too confusing. And now let me show you how the rest of my closet is organized <laughs> so you can see how this works. In my first drawer, what I have is all of my underwear. I have all of my bras, underwear camis, I have my tights, I have my panties and also my socks and the two boxes that I told you about before. Then the drawer underneath, what I have are all of my jeans, all of my pants, all of my shirts, skirts, and I also have all of my belts at the back. And then I also have, this is what I call my activewear capsule wardrobe. So this is where I have my jumpers, my leggings, my shorts, my tops, my bras. And I also have socks in here because they are Pilates socks. And then also the last drawer at the bottom is all of my storage. All of the items that I told you about before that are not in season, that don't fit my body, I have in this space right here. Then rule number five is to make sure your closet is pretty. Pretty to you, of course, no one else. And the reason this is important when it comes to organization is because when we like something, we are much more likely to put the effort into maintaining that. So if your end result is a closet, even after you organize it, is a closet that you're kind of like eh, about, <laughs> you're not gonna be excited to keep it organized. But if you love your wardrobe, then it's gonna be almost joyful to keep it in check. <laughs> So how you can do that without buying anything is the first thing, you can just make sure to color match everything. As you can see, my closet is super pretty. If I can say so myself, I love it, <laughs> obviously. I keep it organized by color. I go from black and then I have my colors in the middle and then I go into white and then I go into beiges. And the reason I'm not sectioning anything further is like I said, I just have one meter closet and if I would put it in categories first and then organize it by color, it would look a little bit messy again. So if you don't have a lot of clothes, just don't worry about categories, just organize everything by color. It's gonna look so much prettier. And of course, you can also do that with your drawers I personally I go from dark to light <laughs> and then the second really important tip here is to match your hangers I cannot emphasize how important this is if you have mismatched hangers no matter how small your wardrobe is it's not gonna look organized it's not gonna look pretty so you want to invest some money into new hangers and also you can use hangers almost as a tool to keep you in check. So you can say, okay, I'm going to buy 50 hangers and that's my limit. So if I then buy something new, something else has to go, which I think is pretty cool. So I personally love the velvet hangers. So this one is empty, I can show you. Because first they're really, really thin, which is amazing, especially if you don't have a lot of space. But another reason why I love them is because they have friction. So when I put something on, it doesn't fall down. In the past, I remember I had wooden hangers and things, they were just kind of sliding off. You wanna avoid that. Also, you can have wooden hangers with some kind of dips to avoid the slipping that I just mentioned. Also, I just remembered something that I'm gonna show you. Okay, <laughs> so I'm back. So these are the accessories that you can use if you wanna put your skirts or shorts or pants onto hangers as well. Uh, so there are little clip-ons. You can just add it onto your hanger and you can just clip your pants, your skirts on top of that, you see? And then you can put it like this, if that is something you would be interested in. Also, they have so many different colors. I just went for a black and silver but I've seen something like a beige and they also have like gold. They also have rose gold items out there, but of course it's not for everyone. You can go for whichever design you like, just whatever you do, match them. <laughs> and then another simple thing you can do to really enjoy your wardrobe is play with different aromas, which I have mine right here. So you can have some kind of a satchel. If you enjoy fragrance, this is something you can play around with. Of course it's optional. And then also I would say that if you own the wardrobe and you see yourself living there for quite a while, it's worth to customize it to your own needs. So you can repaint the doors or the closet itself. You can maybe order new shelves or drawers from a carpenter. <laughs> so you can invest a little bit of money to make organization and getting dressed really easy. As you can see, that doesn't have to be super expensive. We actually reorganized and decluttered my entire mom's closet, which I will link here if you wanna check that out. 
out. It doesn't have to be expensive, but you just want to, you know, maybe buy a clothing rail or some shelves or some drawers or stuff like that. Now, if that is not an option, maybe you're renting, <laughs> then maybe you're a little bit more limited. But what you can still do is maybe change the doorknobs. If there are some doorknobs, <laughs> you can maybe find some that you really, really love. Or maybe you can have some kind of inspirational quote inside of your door or a mirror, or maybe you can create some kind of a focal piece in your wardrobe if you have the space. And then also something that's really, really important when it comes to closet organization is to make sure we're not bringing in bad purchases, clothes whenever, everywhere. So that's why I'm linking another video right here that you can watch next that will help you with this. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you next time.